Now, going to take you right back to what was our top story here on uh, France 24. The US saying it could strike a deal to free Brittany Griner, the WNBA player who's been detained in Russia for months. And Dipti's got more. She's uh, been looking through the newspapers to bring us the latest on it, Dipti. Yeah, the Washington Post says that announcement from the US came just hours after Brittany Griner faced a crucial moment in her Moscow trial uh, on drug charges that's actually underway. Uh, she's asked for leniency in the hopes of swaying the court against the 10 year prison sentence sentence that she's facing. The Biden administration appears to be breaking away from its policy of icing out Moscow. That's what the Washington Post says. Um, Anthony Blinken said the U.S. has made a significant deal proposal with Russia for Griner's release, but that also that of the security consultant Paul Whelan, also detained in Russia. The U.S. has not said exactly what that deal is, but speculation is rife that it could involve the release of uh, the Russian arms trafficker Victor Bout, who's detained in a U.S. prison. Uh, the Washington Post uh, says he's a former Soviet military translator who's serving a 25-year sentence in a U.S. prison for conspiring to kill Americans and sell weapons to the FARC. Um, Russia has long called his uh, imprisonment unlawful, uh, and uh, actually his exploits uh, inspired the arms trafficking film Lord of War, uh, starring Nick, Nick Cage. Oh, Sorry. okay, not seen that one. There you go. Know about that. There you go. Uh, let's bring in some sport now. Um, heartbreak, though, is for the French women's football team in the Euros yesterday. Yeah, Les Bleus uh, saw their Euro hopes vanish into thin air after a 2-1 um, loss to Germany in the second semi-final, setting up an England-Germany showdown for the Euros final at Wembley Stadium on Sunday. The dream has flown away, that's what L'Equipe, the French sports paper, says, adding that the German side was just too strong for a French team that was perhaps too timid, too stereotyped. At least now the French side knows what it needs to really do or what, what it's missing out on in order to win um, a, a major trophy, they keep concedes. The German papers, meanwhile, ecstatic, as you can imagine. Pop, pop, that's what the build, <laughs> uh, the German tabloid build says. That's in reference to the German captain, Alexandra Pop, who scored those two goals to help Germany book its spot in the final. And there's a lot of comparisons to the 1966 Germany-England um, Men's World Cup football final. Uh, Bill saying after 56 years, Germany now has a chance to uh, take revenge for its 4-2 defeat in 1966, the last time that England were actually, uh, that they actually won a football trophy. Sunday's final in Wembley uh, has already been sold out, Stuart. Yeah, I'm sure it has. Denmark's Tour de France winner Jonas Vindegaard has been given a hero's welcome in Copenhagen three days after he won the Tour de France. It's pretty impressive, Four these days, pictures, yeah. aren't they? That's right. Sorry. Yeah. <laughs> well, it's three days yesterday. Yes, exactly. There three days as of yesterday. <laughs> um, not a it's not a surprise that he's been given this welcome. I'm De Denmark, of course, is a cycling mad country, but... Uh, you know, th even this is really takes a cake. Look at this welcome for Jonas Vinegar. Yeah, it's amazing. Uh, yesterday, the 25-year-old Dane <laughs> greeted a jubilant, ecstatic uh, Danish crowd, almost like the kind of welcome a queen might get. Exactly. It looks king. like the Jubilee celebrations from a few weeks back. Yeah. Exactly. Wrong flag, but apart from that. And also, I mean, <laughs> he was flown in a private jet from wow. the Netherlands to Denmark, accompanied <laughs> by fighter planes, and then taken straight to the town hall where he was standing on the balcony of the town hall, which itself is sort of a privilege for very few already. Um, he's royalty now, that's what Cycling News says, <laughs> and perhaps the best rider Denmark seen in a very, very long time. Well done to him. Commonwealth Games begin today in the uh, British city of Birmingham, the sporting competition. It gathers athletes from Britain and its former colonies. This year, though, well, it's been marked rather by um, waning interest in the competition. You might even say indifference or growing indifference. Many people really questioning the relevance of the Commonwealth Games um, and, uh, you know, and also the fact that host countries are increasingly unwilling to fork out the money needed to host these kind of games. Uh, that's uh, what the Sydney Morning Herald asks. Why is it still a thing? Uh, it... And in fact, what's interesting is that the Financial Times says because of this, perhaps, the Games is looking to revamp and um, uh, and, and actually downsize from 2026. The next Games, for instance, there'll only be two compulsory sports, athletics and swimming. The host country will be able to choose from a, a, a whole a list of other sports uh, that could include esports, urban sports, um, and host countries could also put forward sports that are popular domestically like lacrosse in Canada or kabaddi in India. The idea really to, uh, I guess, break away from the British monarchic, royalist, colonial origins of the Commonwealth Games.
Finally from Ditti, I didn't know she was going to do this story. This story <laughs> means an awful lot to me, I have to say. And me too. When I was 16, uh, doing my O-levels uh, in the UK, everybody, everybody watched Neighbours. It's coming to an end. Yep, that's right. After 37 <laughs> years, wow. the beloved Australian <laughs> TV soap uh, Neighbours is coming to an end. Uh, it's a show that gave us Kylie Minogue, Margot mm. Robbie, and Jesse Spencer, among others. Uh, there's a 90-minute finale, a, a series finale, that's being aired this Thursday, perhaps like right as we speak, it's being aired in Australia. Right. Um, earlier this year, the UK producer Channel Five, which um, uh, which was helping, which was producing or mm. helping produce the show in the UK, decided to drop the show, meaning that basically Neighbours lost a huge part of its funding uh, and and just had to shut down production. Uh, so this Thursday, the the Neighbours, uh, the the beloved residents of Ramsey Street, will say goodbye. For oh, the last time, oh, many neighbor. of us grew up with this show. Yeah. And, I mean, you said you're... I did, and my mum still watches 16. it, actually. Yeah. My mum will be heartbreak. I haven't watched it for about 30 years, probably, but everybody watched it and when there's I was always, a teenager. And I mean, 37 years, um, ABC, the Australian website, tells us that there were 68 character deaths, 20 <laughs> births, and 63 <laughs> weddings. Uh, to give you an idea of how big the show is, Scott and Charlene's wedding in 1987, a.k.a. Jason Donovan and Kylie Minogue's characters, drew 2 million Australian viewers and 20 million British viewers. And to finish the bulletin, Dipsy will sing us out on the theme I tune. absolutely will not. <laughs> That's it from us. More very shortly. Do stay with us. <laughs> You could do, though, couldn't I you, could. if you wanted to? Perhaps. Oh, we haven't got any other music. <laughs> so.